this might just be the setup for today because I have no idea where my camera charger is. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. I know I haven't posted in a really long time, but this isn't my usual setup. I wanted to just film a video and I am very like ill prepared for it, but I wanted to give you an update on what it's like really working in the hospital right now amongst all this hysteria. I got off my 12 hour shift, so I might set it a little bit. But, so I might set it a little bit throughout this video just because I am pretty tired. I just worked two days in a row and I am set to work another four days in a row. The coronavirus mimic a lot of the symptoms of the flu or the cold. For example, coughing, um, the congestion, stuffy nose, um, they don't have any symptoms of like sneezing, which is more towards the common cold. Um, they also, they may have a sore throat, scratchy throat. Um, but one thing that is very different from the cold and the flu that makes coronavirus different is the shortness of breath. Um, and that's pretty much what the big um, giveaway is. Another thing that we do screen for is obviously any type of travel. And now it's not only to China, it is extended to Italy, um, even any travel outside the U.S. in the last 30 days or any contact with anyone who's traveled outside the U.S. in the last 30 days. Um, so that's a very broad statement. So um, in terms of what we're doing in the healthcare field right now, I just wanted to give you a lowdown because it's so freaking crazy what's going on. Um, literally Disneyland's closing and Beyond Wonderland was canceled and everything is becoming very real. And I just wanted to talk about it because I feel like in some senses the media is blowing it up a little bit more than it should be, but in some senses we should be um, careful. Um, I want to throw up some statistics. They were on my phone, but since I'm using my phone to film, we're just going to go ahead and plop them up here. I'll just edit it in. Um, there are a lot more deaths in things like TB or cancer right now. Um, but looking at the statistics now after a few days, I'm kind of thinking about it. And I think it's because more so we aren't able to detect coronavirus as much as we are able to detect like, things like TB because we have standard diagnostic tests. Um, something that I was come to my concern in terms of the coronavirus was yes um we as young people are able to fight it off with our own immune system but maybe for me for example i'm not concerned about myself which is why like i'm still going to work and everything um but i'm more so concerned about um my multi-generational household i still live at home i live with my grandparents who are like 75 and 85 so it's a little bit concerning when I get home and I just essentially kind of like run away to my room, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, and I hope that they don't follow me there. Um, and it's a little bit sad because um, usually like I'll just like go home and eat breakfast with my Loa and we'll like talk after my shift. But that's something that I obviously can't do right now just because I'm exposed to so many people. Um, people of interest is what they call them at the hospital. And I don't want to... I don't, nobody really knows if it's airborne or it's um, contact or whatever it is. But as far as the precautions we're taking in the hospital, we're taking contact and airborne precautions. Every single day, the CDC is throwing up new, um, new types of ways to protect ourselves and prevent any um, spread. So essentially what's going on right now is in my hospital, technically, these patients, they want us to be one-to-one. -one. So, for example, we have to use this PAPR, um, which is, like, this big space helmet thing that you see, like, when in all those, like, memes that are supposed to be, like, funny, but now I guess they're getting a little bit real. Um, if you don't use the PAPRs, you use a N95 mask with a face shield, and that's sufficient unless they are going to be intubated um and essentially what is going on is the 
Dr. Wears a Pauper, the RT Wears a Pauper, and then the RN Wears a Pauper. So there's three people in Poppers, and those three people are the only people allowed in that room at that time, if the patient does need to be intubated. Um, for example, like, um, because of the shortness of breath, I don't really know the whole mechanism of action of the coronavirus right now. I haven't really looked that, into that that much. I don't even know if we have any research on that. But the shortness of breath could eventually lead to respiratory failure. Um, another thing to keep note of is people at high risk right now that they're looking into are people, I know the top three are like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and um, cancer. I don't know what kind of cancer, probably just like any type of cancer. Um, so some steps that my hospital are taking are we, I won't be working tonight. Um, but I'll be working Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, so we'll see how this plans out. Um, but we have a tent that it's set outside for people who are um, feeling like they should be tested for COVID-19. And these people are going to stay outside and be tested, and the RNs and people who are testing them are going to wear a mask. Okay, so these people are going to be wearing a mask, okay? And these people are going to be outside, stationed outside, okay? I don't even know if you can tell right now, but it's pouring rain. <laughs> And so this is going to be a fun uh, camp out. Another thing they just implemented this morning is that we're going to be stationing. So we only have two entrances, the ER entrance and the main entrance. At each of these entrances, everyone who walks through the door is going to be taken, their temperature is going to be taken and um, anything above 100.4, I believe, is um, not allowed in. Another thing being implemented is no visitors in the hospital unless they are a laboring mom, you're allowed one, a pediatric, so either mom or dad, only one parent, and then um, a very critically ill person, which is one um, family member or whoever, which is a little bit frustrating to some people, I understand. Being said, it's going to be a little bit wild in the hospital for the next few days. Um, you see a lot of these like crazy things. Like I saw some things describing, I don't think this really accurately describes it, but in some senses it does. Um, how the Titanic is sinking and where the healthcare people are like the people who are the band still playing. I don't really feel like that right now because Alex still has to go to um, his job. So I don't feel like too out of it. And I see my parents still going to work, but then again, my parents also work in healthcare. Um, but other than that, schools are closing, um, classes aren't being held, students aren't allowed in our hospital, specifically in our ER, and it's getting very real, and I just wanted to talk more about it because, um, with people not being in clinical, I know a lot of people who watch my channel are students, and this is really what's going on right now. So, I know this video is a little bit scattered, but the way they're testing for it right now, it's changing every single day, but right now it's in a nasal swab and then it's an oral or pharyngeal swab. And these swabs, it's very bizarre, they can go into the same tube. Um, we only have a limited number of tests right now, but they are working on getting some more tests so that we can test more people. I don't know if they just started that this morning, but last night we only had very few tests. A lot of people are just coming in and asking for a chest x-ray, and as long as their chest x-ray is okay, they're like, okay, bye. There's just a lot of things going on, and things are closing. People are starting to get very frantic, and I don't necessarily think there's a need to panic, but we should take some precautions in preventing the spread of disease. So like wash your hands, um, close your mouth when you cough, or cough into your shoulder thinking about it. If you have questions about it, I'll try and answer them down below, but that's just what we've been doing. Um, it used to be that they had to be in an airborne room and we only have airborne two airborne rooms but now they're allowed to be in any enclosed room the er has a lot of like curtain rooms and they aren't allowed to be in there they have to be in a um closed door room obviously because we don't know how exactly it's being spread um yeah there it's crazy because there's like cases popping up here and there and who even knows 
like some research that I saw was that another country that had been suspected of coronavirus was the um in Korea they had suspected coronavirus and they seemed a lot more prepared because what they did was they essentially sent out a mass amount of test kits tested almost 15,000 people and they identified the hot spots and that's where they targeted the treatments which is a very like smart move for them because I wish that's something that we had done here because mass populated areas like the LA OC area these areas are very um, congested and are likely high um, risk areas and yeah also there's a lot of asian markets out here so everyone was stocking up on rice and probably touching stuff as i touch my face <laughs> anyway i need to go shower i need to get ready and go but i just wanted to get the short update to let people know that i am here and i'm alive and we are still working towards um testing people getting people answers and just trying to contain what is going on right now and despite our ill preparation i think our hospitals are doing like the best that they can with the limited amount of resources that we're given so good for them for that and yeah I don't know how we're gonna get all this stuff to stuff the tents and the people who are um, taking temperatures at the door in addition to our core staff but we'll figure it out so yeah anyway hopefully that fills some people in anyway i just want to kind of express like the feelings that i was feeling especially today when we came in contact with someone who is a person of interest it's like really scary especially because you could never really trust your oh when someone says they're traveling it's not like you necessarily have their passport or anything so you never know like are they telling the truth you don't know like the whole story a lot of the times in er and that can really has like some high anxiety for you but you have to also keep in mind it's a high anxiety for them and I just wanted to add that. Okay, back to the rest of the video. <laughs> Who are just curious and wondering what it is that's going on in the hospital. I do think that some people are now scared to be at the hospital, which definitely if you just have abdominal pain, um, that can be essentially treated at home, stay home because you don't want to be exposed to something that might be in the hospital, especially if you have any pre-existing um, history. So yeah, that's just the precaution that I'm going to give to you all and I'll leave you all with that. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Um, but even me myself, I don't know, things are changing every single day and I recommend that you not read as much into like the mass media, but maybe so read the research that's being published on it and read the cdc and i think that's like the biggest research that we should be using as opposed to the hysteria that's being portrayed in the media and the news but as always stay safe and i'll see you guys in my next video